Okay, well, thank you very much. You've uh, heard the evidence, uh, and I hope you're now convinced about the power of copper. Um, you've heard as well this week, it was headlines, what the Prime Minister had to say. And in effect, what he said was that Britain will lead a global fight back against antibiotic-resistant superbugs to prevent the world from being cast back into the dark ages of medicine. We know that penicillin was a great British invention by Alex, um, uh, Alexander Fleming back in 1928. And superbugs are now regarded as the most serious health problem that the world faces. But 70% of bacteria are resistant to at least one drug. And we know that 30% of the general population are colonized by Staphylococcus aureus. And although it's important to develop new drugs to combat antibiotic-resistant organisms, I think we need to shift our focus towards prevention of micro uh, uh, microbial colonization and the risk of potential infection. We heard that in Europe, about 13 to 24 billion euros are spent on health uh, care associated infections, giving rise to uh, increased hospital stay and contributing to patient distress and as well as direct and indirect deaths. In a crossover study on an acute medical ward where they replace the toilet seats, handles, and ward entrance door push plates with uh, copper, they found that in effect, the median numbers of microorganisms harbored by these uh, copper-containing items were significantly lower than controls. Also in intensive care units, where patients were randomly placed into copper rooms and non-copper rooms, the effect was a significant reduction in healthcare-associated infections. But even simple things like using a pen, using a copper uh, pen compared to a stainless steel pen, you could see that there was a significant reduction in colony-forming colony units uh, in uh, copper pens both immediately and 11, 11 hours later. So what is li lipodermatosclerosis? Well, these are changes that occur on the skin in the lower legs, and you can see skin induration, swelling, redness, and increased pigmentation. And this is believed to be due to venous insufficiency. And copper has been shown to promote angiogenesis and thereby improve skin conditions. Traditionally, we've been using um, uh, thromboembolic uh, stockings, and these are the copper infiltrated uh, uh, stockings that have been used. And by observational studies, we have found a considerable improvement after, in this subject, 30 days. And in this uh, subject as well, where there were a chronic uh, ulcer, you could see the effect over here within 28 days. So what we plan to do is to do a study where we would randomize each leg. So you have a right and left uh, uh, stocking, which will be worn, and neither the person, uh, uh, the research fellow, nor the patient will know which one contains copper. And by giving it to these patients who have lipodermatosclerosis, we can then follow them up at baseline, four weeks and eight weeks. We will take photographic images and we'll give them a questionnaire which will include a quality of life study uh, a question. So the second study we planned to do was to see if, if we could replace a whole ward, the bed sheets, the curtains, the, and make them wear copper pajamas and see what happens to uh, the infection rate and compare it to another ward that has uh, the conventional uh, clothing material, then we'll be able to establish whether there is a genuine reduction in infection. But in Croydon University Hospital, the infection rate was so low that we found it would take us many years to answer this question. We therefore looked at other issues or other possible ways to study this. We know from our previous study that 11% of women having a baby um, that then requires uh, suturing of perineal tears develop wound infections. But this can have a significant morbidity for the mother who should be concentrating on her, her baby but is now distressed by these infections. Similarly with cesarean sections, it has been shown that almost 10% of women who have a cesarean section develop wound infection despite prophylactic antibiotics. Uh, a readmission rate uh, is increased, and the most common infection is Staph aureus, with 17% of them being due to MRSA. 
So what we planned to do was, this is the conventional dressing that we use after a cesarean section. We plan to, uh, well, this is what the design is, that we're now going to have a membrane of copper infiltrated material lying on the undersurface of this dressing. And uh, use this and randomize uh, these uh, dressings, one with copper and one without copper on these patients, and then look at wound infection at day three, 10, and 15. Similarly, for women who have a vaginal delivery, we have uh, designed these um, um, uh, continence uh, uh, pads or sanitary towels. And you can see this is a cross section over here of this towel, and this is where the copper infiltrated material would be. And once again, we plan to randomize this. So in conclusion, I think uh, I don't have any results because that's what we are planning to do, but I think you should be convinced that the uh, that copper is an effective antimicrobial agent. We have no concerns regarding its uh, safety, but what we do need are robust in vivo studies. And the question really is, does a significant reduction in colonization that we have identified really translates into a clinical reduction of infection and promotion of wound healing? Thank you. <laughs>